Hey guys, welcome to another video, and today we're going to be looking at the book that I am very late to. <laughs> so, I recently got Into the Pit um, on a lovely Kindle app, and I read the first story, and today I'm going to do kind of a little summary of it and an analysis. I know Dorco has done this already, but it was 15, 15 minutes long. Um, I haven't, I haven't actually watched that video, I don't know how my video is going to compare to that. But, um, yeah, I've got Into the Pit right here on my phone, and initial reactions, absolutely loved it. Um, it, was, it was quite a slow start, but then it really got into it, and I absolutely loved it. The thing I love about it is the fact that it's kind of like, it is FNAF, but it's different. It's not just, um, oh, this child goes missing, and it's this purple guy in a spring bonnie costume. It's a big twist on the original FNAF stories, which, uh, the original FNAF stories, which is what I like. Um, apart from that, it's a really, really nice short story to just read. Um, anybody could pick it up, I think, and, and read it and be like, not be too confused with it, even though they may not have played FNAF. So I, I kind of like that too. Anyway, as you can see, I have made so many highlights, it is actually insane. Some of them are blue, those are like outstanding highlights, like um, like really good quotes and stuff. Um, but I've made a lot of highlights. <laughs> and I'm going to quickly go through the story with you. Hopefully it won't take 50 minutes. <laughs> what this story is, is it's about this child called Oswald. Um, the, the story starts with him looking at a dead possum. Possum? Possum? I kind of said that like French, like poisson. Um, possum. It's a grey furry corpse on the side of the road. I thought that, that would have something to do with the story, apparently not. But it's just saying that it was as dead as the town that they lived in. Basically, all of the storefronts are boarded up. Um, there was loads of dust everywhere on, on the stores. Basically, this town was dead. Deader than... Uh, a dead possum. Poss... Poss... I cannot say the word. But three years ago, uh, when Oswald was seven, the town was, was thriving, right? It was a really nice town, but then the mill closed, uh, and that was the reason that his dad lost his job, and they kind of went poor, and loads of people lost their jobs. Uh, they moved out of this town. Um, and now the entire town is dead because the mill closed. Um, one of the families that moved away was including Oswald's best friend Ben, who he always used to play with, and now, three years later when he is ten, he's just kind of by himself and lonely and he's got nothing to do because Ben's not here, um, and he's kind of sad in, in a sense. His dad now works at the deli counter at Snack Space, um, where he gets quite a low income, um, while his mum works in a hospital from 12 in the afternoon to 12 in the evening, 12 in the morning. So, <laughs> it's a strange family, but um, you'll see how it comes into play later. Um, this doesn't really come into the story a lot, but he has a, he has a school bully, I guess, um, called Dylan Cooper. Um, he was the tallest kid in 5th grade and clearly enjoyed looming over his victims. Uh, he also calls him Oswald the Ocelot. Nice little detail there. Uh, and that was because of a kid's channel about a pig, a big pink ocelot named Oswald. Uh, so they called him that. Um, kind of elaborating on the, on the poor side of things, he didn't have any modern electronics. Um, he had a laptop, but it was a, it was a whole family laptop, so he couldn't bring it to school or anything. And on the last day of school, um, because he didn't have his his technology, um, while all of his friends did, he just got out a notepad. And this this is a strange part of the story to me because it seems to be a big part of the story, but it doesn't really go anywhere. So he found drawing and creating like like a welcome escape. Um, but he was drawing these mechanical animals, um, specifically bears, bunnies, and birds. Uh, nice use of plosives there. So the other, the other note is they weren't just like they were different versions of them. 
Um, there were mechanical ones, uh, and there were withered ones, where you could see the endoskeleton underneath. Um, obviously, it's it's referencing Freddy there. Um, it's referencing the unwithered and the withered animatronics in FNAF. Um, so that's our first kind of reference point there. The story keeps going on about uh, like telling us that all of the food that he had was good enough to eat, but not good enough to sell, um, which I think is quite a nice quote there. Uh, they also have a cat, Jinx, uh, a black cat, um, who actually comes into play later, which is, which is very strange as well. Now here's where it gets a little bit weird. Um, it's the summer holidays, um, and Oswald is like, oh, there's nothing to do without Ben, it's not the same. And his dad is like, well, you could go to the library, you could go to this place called Jeff's Pizza. Um, and so that's exactly what he does. He, he tries, to, he reads a few books at the library, uh, and every day he goes to the library and then goes to Jeff's Pizza. Jeff's Pizza is a pizzeria run by one person. Can you guess what the name of the person is? Uh, Jeff would give him free pizza, basically. Um, because he stayed quite a long time, he stayed there for hours just reading uh, with nothing to do um, and he was so poor that he could only have a slice of pizza but it was lucky because the pizza slices are pretty big. As Oswald used to stay there he notices that the place is very run down but clean so and there's like lots of room there that isn't used for anything and he starts to get suspicions about like what it was beforehand. He he thought it was something bigger and better than it was now, uh, just Jeff's Pizza. So, uh, and and the and the other detail is he was looking like behind paint on a wall because it was like scraped off or something, and you could see little outlines of like figures or something. So that was it was obviously something before that. Quite a lot of time passes where Oswald just goes to the library, then goes to the uh, to Jeff's Pizza. Um, a few other things are mentioned here. Um, for example, he used to watch an old Japanese monster movie called Zendrelix vs. Mecha Zendrelix, um, and it reminded him of the mechanical animals that he drew when he stripped them off of their foot. And it said that even though he was just a guy in a rubber suit, somehow he managed to have a lot of personality. So that's kind of also going off of Springtrap there. Um, kind of, although it's just a suit, it seems to have a lot more personality than, than it looks like. So now we move on to why this story is called Into the Pit. Now, he goes to Jeff's Pizza quite a lot. Um, I think it's every day. And he sees this he sees this ball pit and it seems really out of place. I'm gonna read you this quote. It was a large rectangular pen surrounded by yellow netting, but it had been roped off with a sign that said do not use. The pen itself was filled with red, blue and green plastic balls that had probably been brightly coloured once, but were now faded and fuzzy with dust. So obviously this this didn't seem to fit here. It was just Jeff's Pizza, which was like a place where loads of people go, not necessarily kids, and there was this this strange ball pit here. And it the worst part was it was covered in dust. And there was a do not do not use sign on there. So that obviously means that it's been there for a very, very long time. It's been run down by age. Like even the netting is yellow. So it's been there for a long time and obviously the suspicion of something that being there beforehand uh has risen a lot. Um, one thing to mention, I don't know how this fits into the story but hopefully it does, um, the mention of pink eye is is very prevalent in this in this story and I'm, I'm looking on Wikipedia now, conjunctivitis, conjunctivitis also known as pink eye is inflammation of the outermost layer of the white part of the eye and makes the inner surface and the inner surface of the eyelid it makes the eye appear pink or reddish. Obviously, Oswald's mum is a doctor, and she hates, like, ball pits and stuff because of the concerns of hygiene. And apparently, all of the pizzerias, um, all of them had the ball pit taken out because of this concern of hygiene, except Jeff's Pizza. Uh, and, and it's a bit concerning that it's still there. 
Uh, it then talks a lot about Jeff and how and the fact that it looks like he hadn't slept in a week. Uh, he had bags under his bloodshot eyes, and he doesn't change expression ever. So now we're about to get to the good part. Um, well, the almost good part. So Oswald was lying in bed sketching his mechanical an animals one day, and then Ben had texted him. Um, Basically, he's asking how his summer was. Ben is off on holiday somewhere at Myrtle Beach or something uh, for vacation. There's arcades and mini golf. Um, and they both say, we wish you were here. Then he asks Oswald what he's doing and he says, I've been going to the library a lot, you know, I've been at Jeff's, Jeff's Pizza and Ben is like, is that all? Uh, and then he says that the pizza place is creepy. Um, and that's when Oswald realises yeah, yeah, the pizza place is creepy. And so the next morning, Monday morning, uh, he was really in a bad mood. He didn't like, he didn't want to talk to his family. Um, and he says that he's tired of doing the exact same thing every single day. His dad then talks about if he gets promoted, he'll get an extra £1.50 an hour. And Oswald wants to say something, but doesn't have the strength to do it. Oh no, he does have the strength to do it. Um, he said Ben's dad got a job that pays even better than his old job with Emil. Uh, and then dad says, um, yeah, he had to move 500 miles away to get that job. So basically they're having an argument and Oswald is in a bad mood and he slammed the door of the car as he got out to the library. And yeah, he's not having a good day really. And then he really, and then he thinks, you know what, I'm going to prank my dad because I'm not, I'm not in a good mood today. He's, yeah. He wants to prank his dad, and so he said, Today, dad will have to come and find me. And so, Oswald went into the pit. Um, one thing to note before I carry on, he took off his shoes. Remember that. Um, so he took off his shoes, left them outside the pit, and went into the pit. Um, he put his head under for about a um, hundred seconds. Like, the smell was getting to him. And so he needed to go up for air again. But then he rose, and I will tell you this quote. His ears were assaulted by the sound of beeping electronics and yelling and laughing kids. He has just gone into a pit in Jeff's Pizza, which is very run down, um, not very fun. Then he went back up, and suddenly he's in a world full of arcade machines, full of children, and vivid colours and flashing lights. He's wondering, how did he get here? What happened? Everyone's hair was styled and fluffy. The boys wore polo shirts, um, like pink or aqua polo shirts, and the girls' hair was really big. Um, you could tell they've gone back in time. Across the room, a trio of animatronics. Obviously, that's Freddy, Bonnie and Chica. And everybody was wearing birthday hats with pictures of the characters on them. Remember that detail too. So he notices that he was still in Jeff's Pizza, but it wasn't Jeff's Pizza. It was what was before Jeff's Pizza. And he he finds out that on a mural that it is called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So that confirms that we are actually in Freddy's now. And he meets these two friends called Chip and Mike. This Freddy's Pizzeria is really new, really up to date. This is a creepy part, um, basically they go to play a new game and as they walk there they see uh, a yellow rabbit it, um, on the side just looking kind of kind of dead, kind of just like there like but it, it seemed creepy to him but he just kind of left it and then he was like oh no my dad's gonna kill me, He's, I didn't want the police to get involved in this. So he thought, the only way to get out of this is to go back into the pit. He goes back into the pit, counts to a hundred, comes back up, and he was there. But the detail is, no time had passed. When you go into the pit, time just stops. And the detail that I, I was gonna mention but I didn't is the fact that his shoes weren't there when he walked out of the, the ball pit in Freddy's. So that means, yes, he has changed, he has gone back in time. So he goes back in, I think every day, he goes back into the ball pit and comes back out and he pinpoints the date as 1985. So there you go guys, that is, that is it, 1985, 
Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, that's the setting in the pit. Uh, there are a lot of Back to the Future references, which is really cool, I like that. The second time he goes in, there's someone in this yellow rabbit suit, again. But he was just stood in the in the corner, still as a statue, and it seemed like Oswald was the only one who could see him. It turned into a regular thing, which I like, um, maybe maybe a week or so. Um, and he actually he wanted to bond with Chip and Mike more because of course he he didn't know things about the 80s, so he went home and he made a list of 80s movies and watched them so that he could engage in their conversations more. And it was like Oswald found friends because he didn't have any friends anymore now Ben was gone so now this was like an escape so that he could go and find Chip and Mike then Oswald kind of got sad because he realised that he was he was taking Chip and Mike's money this is the crazy part which I am yet to explain I have no idea why this happens why it has any coverage in the story he was like oh no I'm using all your tokens I can't play with you anymore I'll just sit and play then he stands up and his pockets are full of Faz token. It feels like almost someone is trying to keep him there. It's a strange, it's a very strange detail. His, his, it's like magic. His, these, all these chips, all these tokens magically fill up his pockets. Genuinely, I was reading this and I got the chills. Like, the chills. It's such, it's so well in this story. One day he goes back to Jeff's pizza and he goes to the pit. After his count to 100 he stood. There were noises but not the usual ones of Freddy Fazbear's pizza. Screams. <laughs> right there. Literally right there I got chills. Screams. Crying children. Yells for help. The fast footballs of people running chaos. That honestly got me. This is so good. Like, it's bittersweet. Basically, all of these mothers were carrying these children outside of the exit. Uh, he had no idea why all these children were running around. Um, and then, in front of him, in front of him stands the yellow bunny costume. The bunny opened a door that said private, went inside, and he followed. And it was a long, dark corridor, which is a strange addition as well. But the rabbit was leading him into a party room. Um, and this is where, again, it got so creepy. Half a dozen kids, none of them older than Oswald, their lifeless bodies propped into sitting positions, their legs stretched out in front of them. Some of them had their eyes closed as if asleep, others' eyes were open, frozen in an empty, doll-like stare. Oswald couldn't tell how they had died, but he knew that the rabbit was responsible for it, that the rabbit had wanted him to see his handiwork. Now, the other detail, the other detail in between those sentences, they were all wearing Freddy Fazbear party hats. Then he realises that the rabbit was about to kill him, so he runs, he, he runs out. Um, he could hear the police sirens. He went into the pit, he counted to 100. Once he, he counted as fast as he could. He jumped out of the pit, and there, there he was, back in Jeff's pizza. He saw his dad with Jeff. So it's strange because time has actually passed now. Yeah, I never, I never actually thought of that before, before making this. His dad grabbed his arm and pulled him out of the pit. Then... <laughs> A pair of yellow arms reached out the pit and pulled Dad under. Yeah, so so Dad was taken into the pit. Then the yellow bunny comes out. Jeff didn't do anything, he was just there like like no expression, blank expression again. This is the weird part, the rabbit opens the passenger door of Dad's car and pushed Oswald in, sorry, uh, and then drove to Oswald's house. And Oswald is like um, where are you taking me? What is happening? How do you know where I live? Um, and <laughs> can you even drive a car? When they got to Oswald's home, he was like, Oh, I really need to go to my bedroom. Uh, and the bunny was like, okay. Well, he didn't talk. Basically, he was not responding to Oswald at all. He was just there with a blank expression again. Then Oswald went to his room, 
and he texted his mum. But she obviously she works at the doctor's, so she isn't going to see it straight away. Now, here's the odd detail. Well, okay, it's not odd right now, but you'll see why it's odd in a minute. Um, Jinx the cat was acting very strange, uh, and she crawled under his bed. Um, you'll see why that's strange in a second. He texted his mum, Mum, emergency, something's wrong with Dad, come home now. She drove home, because uh, it was an emergency, and she went into Oswald's room. And this is the creepiest part. This is honestly the part I got the most chills. Oswald says, it's Dad. He's, he's not okay. I'm, just, I'm not sure even sure where he is. Then Mum puts her hand on both his shoulders. Oswald, I just saw your dad. He's lying on the bed in our bedroom watching TV. He made you a chicken pot pie for dinner. It's sitting on the stove. The other thing I forgot to mention, I'm very bad at covering this, is Jeff didn't react to this bunny either. So, everybody sees Dad, except Oswald and Jinx the cat. Obviously he sees this rabbit, but he believes his mum, because that's what he, she's spo he's supposed to do. He believes her, and he goes to sleep. In the morning when he wakes up, he goes downstairs, he makes breakfast, and then the bunny walks in again. Um, and <laughs> he asked his mum again um, where, his dad, where his dad is, and she said, Oh, he, he's sitting right in front of you. So it's obvious that this bunny is his dad which is so creepy, but only he can see that. Now, this is the day he goes back to school. Summer is over, and they're back at school. And, basically, he, um, the bunny drops him off as his dad. None of the kids react, so this is pretty much proof that only Oswald can see him. Then Dylan comes by, the bully, and says, Well, 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 if it isn't Oswald the Ocelot. And Oswald goes, Give it a rest, Dylan, and pushes him. Uh, I've got way bigger problems than you today. He sits on a bench by himself um, until uh, this girl comes up to him. Um, or it might be the other way around, I think he goes up to the girl or something. And he asks the girl, what are you reading? And she says, Greek mythology. And she says, oddly, that she, she reads it when she needs to be brave. And then it is explained that, basically, she it's her first day here at school and she needs to be brave because there's loads of new people, she just moved here uh, and she needs to meet new friends and, and Oswald was like, I'll be your friend. Um, this girl is called Gabrielle, um, goes home, he knew that the bunny would always catch him if he tried to escape home, but this time in the night he was like, okay, I'm going to make a plan, I'm going to creep out of my bedroom and then I'm going to quickly run out of the front door and then go to Jeff's Pizza, and I'm going to go in the pit again. What happens is that it works, it feels like someone is chasing He gets to Jeff's Pizza and Jeff is like, well, are you okay? Why are you here? Because there's nobody else here at this point. Um, and he said, oh yeah, I'm, I've just come for a, a drink. And he said, okay, let me go get it. Goes off, Oswald runs to the pit. Um, and then he jumps in the pit, and <laughs> here's another creepy part, a shoe. It felt like the sole of a shoe. He scooted around and grabbed it. It was a boot, a steel-toed work boot like his dad used to wear to work at the mill and now wore to his job at the snack space. He moved his hand up a little. An ankle. An ankle in the kind of thick boot sock his dad liked. He crawled further across the floor of the pit. The face. He had to feel the face. And it was his dad. It was his, it was his dad in this pit. So... It's really strange because this bunny was supposedly dad to everyone else. But suddenly dad is in this ball pit and he's been unconscious under there. He's got a very pale face and he's been there for a while. Um, and then Spring Bonnie comes um, again and they have a little fight scene, which is very nice. Um, a few little details. Um, he has fangs. Uh, like, like he opens up his mouth and he has fangs, like the Nightmare animatronics. Very odd detail there. These fangs, um, they go into the arm of Oswald 
uh, and he starts bleeding everywhere, he's got these fang marks on his arm, um, and then he bounces off the netting, goes on his back, and then kind of punches him a few times. Um, and then he, slung, he slings Oswald into the pit. This is the strange part. Um, he had to save his dad, like those ancient Greek heroes Gabrielle had told him about. He had to be brave and face the monster. Then, when he rose from the pit, I'm going to quote this, the yellow thing was suspended from the rope, which was tied securely to a metal rod at the top of the ball pit. The rabbit had hanged himself. Its mouth was opening and closing like it was gasping for breath, but no sound came out. Its paws clawed desperately at the ropes. Its stare, still terrifying in its blankness, was aimed in Oswald's direction, as if it was asking him to help. So basically, he was there with a rope around his neck, and he was like, Oswald, Oswald, not saying anything, of course, because he can't. Um, there was someone in this suit, by the way, uh, if I hadn't said that already. And then he was, Oswald was like, no, <laughs> I'm not saving you. Um, and when he blinked, the suit was empty. There was nothing in the suit anymore. Then Dad kind of wakes up, and Oswald wanted to tell him what happened, but he can't really. The weird part is, he sees the, the costume hanging in the air, and so it's not just Oswald that sees, sees the suit. Uh, Oswald wonders what his mum would say when, he saw the, uh, when she saw the fang masks, um, and then Oswald and Dad bond a little. Um, and that, that's the end, really. What do I think of the story? 10 out of 10. Absolute banger. Um, I explained it quite a lot in depth. Um, there were a few parts which I kind of missed out. Um, but you should go and read it. Honestly, you need to go and read it right now. Um, because it's, it's amazing. It's such a good story and I hope the other two are just as good. I haven't read them yet planning to tonight. Um, what do I think is happening in this story? Well, it could be the the work of the Sound Illusion disc. I don't think it is. I don't think Spring Bonnie would have that. Obviously there's this, this, there's this kind of higher power or something that is doing this to Oswald. Um, he was drawn into this pit uh, and he was drawn, he kept on coming back in. The, the really weird part of the stories are when the tokens are in his pocket, that's a strange part, um, when he blinks and then suddenly the guy in the suit isn't there anymore, um, but he gets a strange sense from the entire pizzeria, um, and it, it's almost like there's like dark remnant there. I actually think Jeff knows something, because um, he doesn't react to any of this, like he, he, he's like, oh yeah, that, that suit has been there this entire time. You know, just hanging from the ceiling, no one in it. Um, he hasn't removed this ball pit, and I think there's something behind Jeff. What it is, I don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> but as I said on a post um, on my, on YouTube before, I think the confusion of this story makes it scary. It's the fact that people believe that Spring Bonnie is the dad, even though it's not. And so, there we go, it's it's some sort of illusion that's happening to everybody except Oswald and the cat, and that is the thing. Why does the cat see it, but nobody else in the neighbourhood or in the town sees it? It's a question that we have to ask, but will be left unanswered. Uh, I could say right now that it is left unsolved, um, but I don't know, I guess I have to do a little bit more thinking on this. I will probably watch Dorco's video on this, um, and I suggest you should too, he probably went even more in depth. That is my first kind of analysis of the f of the Fazbear Frights. Hopefully I can do the next one which is To Be Beautiful um, pretty soon. But this was fun. I really enjoyed this story, um, and hopefully I'm going to do one of these for every single story. So stay tuned for that, make sure you like, comment and subscribe, and uh, I will see you all next time. Goodbye!